In this video we're going to have a look at how the max function can return an item from the list that has the maximum value. In the process we're also going to consider the ordinal value of characters that are stored within lists. The max function will return the maximum value stored in a list, i.e. it will return the item from the list with the max value. Let's consider this computer program here. Look at this line and you can see that here we have a list that has 23, 57, 77 and 42. And that we can see is bound to this name list underscore A. Now if we consider the list, we can clearly see that 77 is the largest value in the list. So this is the item with the largest value. Let's now consider this line of the program and here you can see we're using the max function and in the brackets you can see we have list underscore a. Now list underscore a is the name that's bound to the list. Now what this will do is precisely what we did a moment ago. It'll look for the biggest number in the list and of course that will be the 77. And that 77 is assigned to this variable here that I've simply called max underscore value. Now this line will print out this literal string here, the list content is, and this will print the entire content of the list. This line will print out the literal string the max value is, and here we will print out whatever was stored in the variable max underscore value. So when this program executes, what we would expect to see at the runtime is this here, and you can see it outputs the list and it actually outputs the 77 showing us that what this will do is find the largest number in the list. Let's consider the list for a moment and you can see that everything in it was an integer. Now of course lists don't just store integers, they can store strings, they can store numbers with decimal points and so on, or a mixture. So a list could store a number, a string, a number with decimal points. This is almost the same program as we've just been looking at, but the difference is on this line you can see I've created a different list. And if you consider the entries in the list, the items in the list, you can see that indeed I do have an integer, but if you look at all the other numbers, you can see that they have a decimal point. They're examples of real numbers, often referred to as floats. Of course, if you inspect the list, you can see that the largest number is this one here, 3.142. It's larger than all of the other numbers in the list. Now, the fact that some of the numbers are integers and some of them are floats does not phase this function here. It is able to find the biggest number in the list, the item with the biggest value. And of course, when we execute this program, what we will expect to see is this here. And you can see it displays the list and it also displays the maximum value here. Let's consider this list and you can see that we have various items and if I look to the first item we can see that that is uppercase A appearing in quotes. Now within Python we don't have a character type. What we do have is a string of length 1 and this item is a string of length 1. Likewise this is a string of length 1 and it has got uppercase B. This here is also a string of length 1 and it has lowercase z. Now if we consider this list we can ask the question which item has the maximum value. Now it was clear when we were dealing with a list that contained numbers but here we have no numbers. We have strings of length 1. So which one of these items is regarded as the maximum value? Ultimately, everything in a computer is represented by a binary pattern, and uppercase A is no exception. It is represented by a binary pattern, and if we take that binary pattern and convert it to our number system, that pattern has the value of 65. Uppercase B has the value of 66, therefore uppercase C will be one bigger than the value of uppercase B, and it will be 67. Uppercase D, 68. 
If I have a look at lowercase a, it has the value of 97. Lowercase b has the value of 98. Now these values are taken from the ASCII set or the ANSI set. In other words, every letter on a keyboard that you can see has a binary pattern. A full stop has one, for example. A space has a binary pattern. Consider this table. Here you can see we have the characters A, B, C all in uppercase and their binary representation is shown here. Their hexadecimal representation is here and their deanery representation is here. And if you have a look at the various ways in which the characters are represented, you can see that there is an order to them. If we stick with the deanery, you can see we go from 65 to 66 to 67. Let's consider uppercase X, Y and Z and if you consider their binary hexadecimal and deanery values there's an order here and if we concentrate on the deanery values you can see they go from 88, 89 and 90. Let's consider this character here and you can see that it is a right bracket. Now it has a binary hexadecimal and deanery representation if we look at its deanery representation, we can see it's 91. So it's the next one in the ordinal sequence. And here you can see we've got 88, 89, 90, 91. So 92 will be another character. And it's a question of looking that up if you want to know what it is, or writing a small program that will show you what it is. Now the key that I wish to get across here is this ordering. Look. A is 65, B is 66, C is 67. Let's get back to considering this list. And if you look here, you can see we have uppercase characters and here we have lowercase characters. And what I'm going to do after this list, I'm going to complete a program where the program will show us each of the characters and the value that they have in decimal when we reflect upon the ANSI character set. And this is the program here. And we can see that we're saying for each item in list A, print. And what we're going to print is this literal string, then going to print out the item. So for the first time through the loop, the item will be A. And then we're going to put here has the ordinal value of. And here you can see we're using a function called odd. And we're passing in item. So the first time we go through the loop, this item will be the uppercase A. And what this function will do is tell you its value in decimal as per the table we've just been considering. So if we look at the runtime for this, what we're going to get is this here. And this is what was outputted the first time through the loop. And you can see it says the character is placed here. The item is A, which is placed here. This literal string is placed here. And the ordinal value of the item, which must be capital A, because that's the first item in the list, is 65. We go round again, and of course on this occasion, the item will be B, and we can see that appears here. And this will return the ordinal value of that item, which is 66. Let's consider the output from this computer program and look here you can see we have A, B in uppercase. Now the alphabet is A, B, C so we can see that B comes after A and if we look at the values here we can see 66 follows 65 so we can see there's an order there. If we look at Y, Z, uppercase Y, Z, we know Z comes after y and here we can see that the 90 comes after the 89 so there's an order there if we look to these two characters lowercase a and lowercase b they have these values they have the value 97 followed by 98 now that's a reflection that we have b coming after the a because the 98 is bigger than the 97 but i think it's important to note that these two values are different than these two. So lowercase a has a different value than uppercase a, and lowercase b has a different value to uppercase b. If we look at yz, which is in lowercase, you can see that's 121 followed by 122, so you can see there's an order there, and compare these two numbers with these two here, showing us that 
uppercase Y has a different value than lowercase Y and uppercase Z has a different value to lowercase Z. Let's consider this computer program and on the first line you can see a list has been created and the items of the list are A, B, C, D all in uppercase. Now as we consider those items we need to ask which one has the biggest value. Now for us as a human well they're just the first letters in the alphabet but to a computer program it decides that D is the item with the biggest value the maximum value because if we reflect on what a is represented by uppercase a it's represented by 65 b 66 c 67 and d 68 so the max function will return d as the item with the largest value in the list the maximum value so when we look at the runtime for this you can see that it outputs the list and then here you can see it says the maximum value is D. Now I'm going to amend this program in the way in which you can see here on this line I've made A, B, C and D lowercase and when we consider what the maximum value is of these items well the answer is going to be D again but lowercase d and that's because lowercase d has a larger binary representation than lowercase a b c if you remember lowercase a was represented by 97 b by 98 c by 99 and d by 100 so when we run this program what we're going to see as the output is the following and you can clearly see on this line it says the maximum value is D and you can see that in this case that's the lowercase D let's now consider this computer program which shows an amendment on this line and if we look to the items you can see that they are now lowercase a followed by uppercase B C D now if we consider these items which item has the max value well if we consider how they are represented we know lowercase a is represented by 97 b uppercase b 66 c uppercase c 67 and d which is uppercase d 68 so we can see the runtime to this program here and if you look at the output you can see it's saying the maximum value is a lowercase a and that's because the representation of lowercase a was 97 and we saw that b c d the uppercase representation was a lower value binary pattern now this program shows an amendment to the previous ones and the amendment is shown here and now you can see that the items are strings we have jones allen young and hartley and on this line we're going to find the maximum value of these items which one has the max value jones allen young or hartley well let's look to the first character in each and you can see we have j a y and h all uppercase characters and the one that comes later in the alphabet is the y and we know that that under the hood has a binary pattern that's bigger than the binary pattern for the j the a and the h so what the max function will do it'll decide that young is the string with the highest value so when we look at the runtime for this we get the following and you can see here that the max value is young as we predicted now this computer program shows an amendment and the amendment is shown here you now can see that the items are jones james jenkins and jefferson and if you consider each of those strings in turn you can see that the first character of each is uppercase j now under these circumstances to decide which is the bigger item which item has the highest value the max value we have to go to the second character in each string looking at the o the a the e and the e again now the one that has the largest value is going to be the o so overall the string that is the maximum one is this one here because when we looked at the second character in the string the o had the value that was bigger than the a the e 
and the E. So when we look at the runtime for this, what we can see here is the maximum value is Jones. This program shows a further amendment, and if we look to the items, we can now see we have Williams, Williams, Jones, and Hartley. So at first sight, it would look like these two strings were in fact the same. But if you look carefully, you can see that this Williams has an uppercase W here, and this Williams has a lowercase W. And what we can say in this case is that this W here has a representation that's bigger than any of these uppercase characters here. So the item that will have the max value for these four is this version of the Williams here. And if we look to the runtime, you can see that is the case. So when you create your list in the first instance, you have to make sure that you have some kind of policy where you ensure that the first letter is uppercase. So you don't have this kind of issue here. But of course, there are other ways around this. What I'm showing here is the problem you can have if you simply use the max without taking into account whether the characters you're using are either uppercase or lowercase. It does make a difference, as you can see in this example. Now I've shown a further amendment here and if you look to the items in the list you can see I've got Williams which is a string, I've got two which is an integer, I've got Hartley which is another string and here I've got 3.142 which is an example of a real or a float. Now this is not a problem in Python, you can have lists that have mixed types like this i.e. a string, an integer and a float. Now when we then use the max on a list that has mixed types like this, what will happen? Well, let's run it and see. Well, we get an error, meaning that the max function can't really work when the items are different in the way shown here. And it's saying it's unordered types. Now it would be okay if we had integers and floats in the list, but not strings as you can see here, it caused a problem. Now again there are ways around this but when we simply look at this simple approach to using the max you need to bear in mind that you will have these type of issues if you mix the types in the list. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.